next on Quinn Martin's Tales of the Unexpected. Something like a molecular ball of energy. It didn't materialize till it hit our atmosphere. Our lives are not so different than yours. You're murderous. You're parasites on the universe. There's nothing you can do about it. Some, one, some people will believe me. Is it chance or destiny that makes a man turn down one road instead of another? For Paul Rogers, returning from a fishing trip, the road he chose to take this night would change his life forever. For it does not, as he expects, lead him safely home. Instead, it will lead him into a nightmare that is unending, where reality is suspended and madness the only way out. find this guy? Highway patrol. His car broke down on the whole road last night. They have to call for a tow. You think he's got all his marbles? What do you mean, you think he's got all his marbles? Of course, he's a prosecuting attorney. Prosecuting it. attorney, is that supposed to mean something? Well, you come in and decide for yourself. Mr. Rogers, this is Sheriff Bob Henry from San Elmo. I thought we might need his service. How do you do, Sheriff? Mr. Rogers, I understand you've had quite an experience. Got a copy of the report for me? Yes, sir. Blue lights, whirring, molecular, spaceship. Yeah, well, you read it out loud like that. I know it sounds crazy. I told you I wasn't anxious to come in. I mean, who's going to believe that? Nobody does. Yet. Tell me this. 
Little fellas didn't try to grab you, did they? Look, why don't we just forget about the whole thing, all right? You can take the file. Mr. Rogers, file wait a minute, wait a minute. Take it easy. Nobody doubts that you saw something. We just want to know what. Now, like I told you before, I'm particularly interested in your sighting. And, Mr. Henry, if anybody's crazy here, it's me. Because I still believe that one day I'll show up with a certified UFO that nobody can question. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't mean to ruffle any feathers. I guess I'm just a born cynic. So am I, Sheriff. So am I. Well, now that we got that settled, should we ride out to the site? Sullivan, bring the camera, huh? Bob? Beach chasing drunks. <laughs> Officially, the Air Force hasn't investigated UFOs since 69. But I guess I'm just an old bulldog who can't give up. The base commander is willing to look the other way as long as I don't step on any toes. Listen, Jim, we've had sightings before. There's been no fuss. What's so special about this one? Well, at 4.12 this morning, our radar control reported total power failure, both in civilian utility and emergency auxiliary. Well, that's about the time I saw Whatever it was, the ship or... Yeah, but it's all just coincidence. There's no evidence that anything outside the base was responsible for the power failure. It only lasted three minutes and 17 seconds. Maybe the aliens didn't like what they saw. Maybe. But there's one other sighting identical to Paul's. A year ago last June up in Montana. We've got it on the computer. Still a coincidence? Still a coincidence. Just over there. Let's have a look. Watch out for them little greenies. They might bite you. You're a funny man. Well, after it materialized, it settled down right in here. There was no sound. It was just light. I guess after that, I must have blacked out. I don't see any burn marks. Did you have any sensation of heat at all? Just the sensation I told you about with the flashlight. It was red hot as if it were overcharging. It exploded. Well, you don't have to tell me what you're thinking. Speed of light. Well, it's possible it traveled through space in a form of light. Something like a molecular ball of energy. It didn't materialize till it hit our atmosphere. You sound crazier than I do. I only said it was possible. You said you saw it. Yes. And I did see it. You know, Paul, I've talked to a lot of people that have seen everything from a flying saucer to a cigar. And I get a feeling about most of them right off the bat. A feeling of their credibility. How do I score? No. Let's keep looking. Thousands of plants out in space that might support life of some kind. Apparently, not just life, maybe even intelligence. Well, anything's possible. 
You don't believe that? Nope. I think it's pure escapism. All these spaceships, strange-looking people from outer space. It's just dreams made up by people who are not very happy with the world they live in. And me? <laughs> what am I, one of the unhappy ones? No. You're just tired. You're overworked. Maybe you just dropped off to sleep. Look, I know what I saw. I'm not bothered. All right. It's just that you have been under stress, and uh, I thought it might be something like what happened before. It was seven years ago. I was in a war. Maybe you still are with yourself. I wasn't hallucinating. What other answer is there? Could we, uh, just call it a night? I'm not really very hungry, okay? Besides, I have to go out. Where? Just for a drive. Paul. Oh. Sorry. Look, this time, if I'm going crazy, I'd like to be the first to know. Do what I tell you. I can't do it anymore. But you must. I, I, I can't make those choices. We've got to get those children back to Clinton now. We depend on you. I know, but I can't do it. There are so many children this time. I won't do it. Stop it. What are you doing? Listen, you... It's all right. I'm, I'm not going to hurt you. He's, he's my father. Go away from here. Go and leave us alone. I, I don't understand what's happening. I mean, I, I overheard you arguing, and what are you doing here? Who, who are you? I'm all right. Just get out of here. Children. Go away. Children. Hurry now, children. Children, come on. You'll be fine soon. What do we say? Contusions, mild concussion, maybe. I'll give you something for that pain. Actually, you're pretty lucky, you know, Mr. Kennedy. Wait. Kennedy, m my name is Rogers, Paul Rogers. How is it? Well, he's a little disoriented, but I think he'll be all right. I wanted to come last night when they called, but they said it'd be best to wait. Well, Paul, who called? Other people who found you. Uh, Mr. Edwards, a farmer. He and his son brought you here. You mean the old man and his daughter? Um, Paul, all I know is that they called the sheriff and he gave him the number on the boat. I was still waiting there for you to come back. Who's Kennedy? The doctor called me Kennedy. I'm sorry. Uh, when I called the doctor, he needed a name. 
I thought you might still be confused, you know? And, uh, well, people would would twist what you said, and it, it might get into the newspapers. Oh, you do have a position to protect. You mean your father does? Oh, please, I was only trying to help. Major, does it occur to anybody to wonder what actually happened to me out there? Does it matter that some strange people bounce a rock off my skull? What are you talking about, Paul? You're confused. You were in an accident last night. A car accident. You must have went off the shoulder here. Lucky there wasn't any fire. That's... that's not what happened. Look. You can see where your head hit the windshield at the impact. Sheriff, I was sitting in the back of the head. There was a field with people in it, uh, children. You're singing nursery rhymes. Look, all I know, mister, is this is where the Edwards found you. Somebody put me here. Listen, last night I smelled your breath. If I thought you were drinking, I'd have took you in then. I suppose you're just a crackpot. I've had it. He's all yours. I get the feeling my credibility is just taking a nosedive. You know, the condition that car is in, if you were in it when it crashed, don't you think you'd be hurt more than you are? Well, my people found uh, immeasurable radioactivity in the soil where you said the object landed. We also located a rancher who spotted a blue light on the horizon about the same time as you did. What next? Back to the base. But I'm afraid you're going to not like the next phase of this investigation. And this one. Two pigeons making love on an umbrella. Mr. Rogers, I really have no time to play games with you. Listen, I can touch my nose with my eyes closed. I can spell my name backwards. Uh, enough is enough, all right? I'm sorry. I was asked to certify you as competent. Now, I can't do that unless you cooperate. It's as simple as that. Okay, what do you need? Let's go over your medical history. Medical history. Right. Mumps, scarlet fever, chicken pox, uh, measles. Twice. How about headaches? No. Depression? Nervous disorders. Well, anything in that area? Why didn't you tell me about this? Because I was embarrassed. If I told you, it'd have been all over, right? Why didn't you let me make that decision? I mean, a lot of guys suffered from battle fatigue and shot and them. But I mean to hide it. To have it come out this way. Paul, what happened over there, anyway? Uh... Charlie shelled the airfield almost continually. So it was usually just a question of digging in, waiting it out. Except that one night, uh, my bunker took an incoming mortar. It, uh, killed two of my buddies. And I was, uh, trapped in there with them until morning. And I began to talk to them. I mean, uh, I knew they were dead, but I began to talk to them anyway. And one of them, uh, Corporal Johnson, began to answer back. He could see things, you know, in the future. When they dug us out in the morning, I, uh, I saw them. He didn't even have a head. The next thing I remember is waking up in the VA hospital in Tokyo. Paul, I'm very sorry. Yeah. But Major, I, I can't believe that it was something this important. Well, you were a guy who had hallucinations. You didn't tell us. You tried to hide it from us. As far as the colonel's concerned, that's the ball game. Just like that. Just like that. 
Well, I'm sorrier than you are. Thank you. I'll, uh... Yeah, I'll see you around. Langston. Major, it's Paul Rogers. Morning, Paul. I'm going up to Clifton. I just wanted somebody to know. Now, wait a minute, Paul. Remember what I said about stepping on people's toes? There's been a fire on my boat. He's trying to kill me. Who? Who tried to kill you? What are you talking about? The man I saw at the landing site. He was there at the fire. I've got to... I've got to find out who these people are. Paul, maybe you better wait. Come in and see me in the office, huh? No, I'm sorry. I'm running out of lives. Paul. This portion of Tales of the Unexpected is brought to you by All Temperature Cheer. Three temperatures, hot, warm, cold. One detergent, all temperature cheer.
anybody here? Hello? Yes, can I help you? Why are you here? Because I don't understand what's happening in my life lately. Because I want to know who you are, where you come from. What do you want? I think you ought to get hold of yourself. Who are you? Where do you come from? I was born in Chicago, 1952. I graduated from Hoover High. We moved west three years ago. Now, will you please leave? Oh, oh. Who are you? I've done nothing to you. Please leave nothing. me alone. You rolled the car off the road and set fire to the boat. You understand something? Your father's trying to kill me. Who are you people? I don't know anything about any of those things. Please believe me. No. I don't believe you. I can't believe you until you tell me what's going on. This, this town. There are people here, but, but there's no life. Well, now, I don't know about that. We may not be Las Vegas, but come Saturday night over at the Paradise Bar, I'd say there was plenty of life. Hey, Brody, welcome to Clifton. Paul Rogers. Nice to meet you, Paul. Anything I can do for you? Uh, no, no, I was just, uh... I was just out for a ride, uh, asking directions. Oh, well, we got a lot of beautiful country around here. I'll bet you're going to enjoy it. I hope so. And if you got any questions, just look me up, because I'm the closest thing we got around here to a chamber of commerce. I'll remember that. I didn't know about the fire or the car, truly. What's your name? Anne, but go now. Please, please leave. What can I do for you? What? Uh, just coffee. Town, it's, uh, it's quieter. It used to be livelier. Close down the plant. What plant? Power plant. A lot of people moved away after that. What about the people who stayed? They uh, all seem as if they've had sunstroke. Yeah. Got everybody down. No fun no more. No sorrow either. Guess I'm just getting old.
do you know it won't happen again? She knows her job. Yeah, but she's been acting kind of funny lately. That man, he's gone. Major, it's Paul Rogers. I'm uh, here in Clifton. It's about 50 miles north. Yeah, I know where it is. You've got to get up here now. Paul, we've been through all this. Now... It's here. Proof exactly what you've been looking for. What have you seen? Look, will you come up? Just let me show you, please. This, this town, the, the people here, they're like, they're like zombies. They, they don't even know what's happening to them. Uh, I've seen their equipment. What equipment? What are you talking about? It's electrical of some kind. There. All right. Where will I meet you? There's a, it's a service station at the north end of town. It's the only one here. I'll meet you there. All right, I'll try to get there before dark. to Mrs. White and find out who he called. Just do what I tell you. Town of Clifton up ahead. Yeah. There's a gas station on the north side. Which road do I take? 
You're on it. About three miles ahead. Thank you. Now, you tell me what this is doing here in an abandoned power plant. Because whatever it is, it's not part of our 20th century. No, it isn't. You're right about us. The man you saw in the field, Officer Brody, others you haven't seen, were not from here. From where? Nowhere. Everywhere. We're nomads. Originally from a star group in another galaxy. That was a long time ago. Just about the time your planet was cooling and your seas and land masses were beginning to form. But you, you can't have been that long in coming here. No, since that time, we've traveled from one inhabited planetary system to the next. Seeking environments that could support us. Support? The, the people here in this town. This room has something to do with what's happened to them, doesn't it? The truth is, we survive on... I suppose you'd call it psychic energy. Whatever, it's the raw material for human emotion. Those emotions are surprisingly similar in every corner of the universe, as you and I are similar physically. Somehow, a long time ago, we lost our ability to regenerate that energy from within. So now we must take it from others, where we can find it. What are these things? The best comparable word in your language would be Siphons. We stand under the blue here. Your people there under the red. The energy is transferred in a matter of seconds. The people in the town, do they remember being here? No. Nor do the ones in our other settlements. Get out of here now. Well, what about Easter Town? You think he might be with the girl? I'm afraid so. We don't know what kind of a nut we might be dealing with. If any harm comes to my daughter whatsoever, I'm holding you responsible. It'll be your fault. With what you knew, you should have stopped him from coming Mr. here. Mr. Jason, I assure you, I thought he was quite harmless. But you believed him, didn't you? All that nonsense about a spaceship. I can't answer that. In a way, I suppose I wanted to. I personally know of other reports Mr. about... Jason! He just spotted both of them down by the old power plant. The night that you saw us, a lot of our children had come in. I was there to meet them. I told Jason it was the last time. That's what we were arguing about. I don't understand. The little ones. The little ones can't utilize adult energy. It was my job wherever we went to determine which of your children would be used. Used? They're all so innocent. It's so hard not to love them. Want not to harm them. As I was watching the landing that night, I, I knew I couldn't do it anymore. Make those choices. I pleaded with Jason to, to assign someone else, but he refused. He said it was my duty. As it will always be. He was right, of course. Right? To destroy children? How could it be right any more than he had the right to try to kill me? That was a decision made by the others. They felt you posed a danger because you saw the landing. They must know that I'm still here. Why haven't they tried to kill me again? Because I asked them not to. I asked them if you could be with us. This 
insane. Don't you understand? It will happen anyway, as it's happened many, many times before. There's no use. There's nothing you can do about it. I can try. No one will believe you. People prefer any lie, no matter how far-fetched to the truth. We are very experienced. Someone will believe me. Some, some, one, some people will believe me. The Major! They know about the telephone call. It's no use, Paul. You won't be seeing the Major ever. Why? We had to make a choice. It was decided the Major was the greater threat. I'm sorry, Paul. I don't believe you. I think one day you'll wish it had been you. less painful than this. Colonel, I understand, and I'll make the necessary arrangements. Sergeant, I've got to talk to the Colonel. Somebody's in charge. Take it easy, will you, Mr. Rogers? Listen to me. I called Major Langston from Clifton, the town up north where those people said they came from. Now, the Major came, only they've, they've taken him. Do you understand? They, I better get they some help. To... No, no, don't listen to me! We are being invaded by aliens from another... It's all right. No, no, calm down. Calm down, will you? No, no. The... We know. We don't understand. Major Langston is dead. We know that. We know that. Major Langston was found in a study a half an hour ago. He died of a heart attack. No. 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 This 
just looks at the sky. Do you... Do they think that there's any hope? Well, there's always hope, isn't there? In the turmoil of our world today, perhaps it is so after all that we prefer any lie, however far-fetched, to the unexplicable truth. Quinn Martin's Tales of the Unexpected. You could have blown it all with one bad pitch. No way. King of the Hill. That's what they tell me. Look out! Sonny's never gonna pitch again. There's a specialist on our staff, Dr. Stegner. You talking about uh, sewing his hand back on or something? No, not his hand. Another one. A transplant. Jay Blackman never looks back as he battles his way to Easy Street by way of 7th Avenue. I had to take my own sister. I swear to you, nothing happened. Then why did she try and kill herself? I want it to look like an accident. Nobody said anything about murder. It's the exciting two-hour conclusion of NBC's bestseller, 7th Avenue, tomorrow at 9, 8 Central and Mountain Time on NBC. Look like me. I shall tell you.